Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm just planning on doing a recap of a discussion slash debate between Shannon Q and Darth Dawkins from about a year ago, I think. This was, uh, hang on, let me get rid of that. Um, so, some background on this. I think the original debate was supposed to be between uh, Reds. Um, I think I, th I think his YouTube YouTube name was Reds Rhetoric or something like that. Um, I think he was he was a regular on the the Nonsex Show. He used to debate a lot of flat earthers and stuff. Um, I guess he was supposed to have a debate um, with um, with Darth. Um, things got screwed up, and so last minute sub in was Shannon. He was told about th three hours before it went live. That, uh, you know, she she agreed to go on. Um, there's some interesting stuff in this uh, particular uh, debate. I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing it about one and a half speed just to kind of get through a few things, especially because it really doesn't start kind of heating up until about oh, about 20 minutes into it. In fact, I might actually just kind of glance over to that portion of it um, when they start getting more into the back um, into the back and forth. Um, they don't really give a lot of prolonged um, opening statements. Um, to kind of sum up from the jump, um, Shannon is um, actually interested in having a discussion about the Christian conceptions of the soul and what she what she thinks are some contradictions in terms of how a soul would manifest um, uh, in reality and 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 some of the complications that that, that brings. Um, um, and as somebody who is a I believe she's a counselor, psychologist. Um, that's, that's sort of a big deal for her. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some of this and and get it started, uh, and then um, I'm gonna be pausing it to kind of like weigh in on a few things. Um, I've watched this before. I watched it just kind of briefly last week while I was working, so I just kind of had it on in the background. And there were a couple of, there were a couple of points that actually caused me to pause the discussion because. Um, uh, there, there, there are some portions in here where Darth makes a point or attempts to make a point, and he either blows up something that he previously did, or he refutes something. Um, it's it, it's it's fairly interesting. So I'm I'm hoping that I'll be able to. I didn't catch timestamps of every of every moment that this happened, but I'm hoping that I'll catch it while I'm I'm playing it now. So anyway. Let's see here. Let me share this in. All right. Go. Very easygoing kind of style. It's like, hey, Darth is going to open with a flexible opening statement for you know however long he needs to make his case, and then Shannon. After that, I, we're basically just going to go into open discussion in which Shannon will be asking kind of questions to be sure she's like understood it right, as well as kind of saying like, oh well, what about this perspective? So very. If anybody, I got to tell you that, folks, Shannon is. If anybody's diplomatic, it's Shannon. She's nobody's better than Shannon. I can tell you that. So it's going to be. <laughs> it's going so to, she's I, by the way you guys are so thankful because i have to say thanks to shannon she honestly helped us out i don't deserve it I, we, we should, so thank you i screwed up i told red venture it would be tomorrow i told darth it'd be tonight and then it was like oh wait no i screwed this up and red's like i can't do it tonight and so i was like shannon can you bail us out we're in trouble but she said fine i'll help you so i am so that tone of voice <laughs> no. Dude, that was the exact yeah, tone okay. of voice i was typing just like that i made, made that part up but i uh, was <laughs> so thankful so um with that, I want to say thanks again to our speakers for being here. Thank you guys both for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks. Well, thank you. You betcha. So, Darth, with that, we will uh, set the clock for 10 minutes, uh, roughly 10 minutes. Uh, but as you said, uh, you don't have to use all 10 minutes, and the floor is all yours. No, just I'll need 60 seconds. Uh, the triune God of the Christian scriptures who exists, who created this world, has revealed himself through natural revelation, all of creation. The heavens declare the glory of God, Psalm 14, Romans 1. 
um, and he is the necessary preconditions for all viability of facts and intelligibility of facts, and the denial of which leads to complete metaphysical collapse and unintelligibility, absurdity. Gotcha. That's it. You got it. Well, thank you very much. And with that, we will launch right into open discussion. Okay, that's an interesting opening statement. Perhaps I'll start for the sake of promoting discourse with one of the reasons that I myself find it difficult to hold to the perspective of Christianity as I was a Christian, or I suppose theism in general, but this, this might pertain more specifically to Christianity, which is more relevant to you. And that's the conceptualization of the soul. I studied a bit of cognition and I have a very difficult time um, reconciling the Christian conceptualization of what constitutes a soul with the actuality of the constitution of the material brain and the effects that that can have, as well as um, trying to discern at what point in time during evolutionary progression we became, you know, in his image and were donned with a soul. Um, so taking into account what you said as your own individual perspective that, you know, God revealed himself to you in a way that you personally feel as though cannot be false, how would you uh, address something like that? Or would you be interested in discussing something like that? Because that's something that's of massive interest to me. Well, I, I didn't say that I personally received a revelation. I'm referring to God's natural revelation in all of creation. God has constructed this world in such a way that all... Okay, so that's uh, that's problem number one. He's saying that he didn't receive revelation. Yes, he did. In order for precept to exist, in order for it to matter, um, revelation was received by everyone. But that's the whole point. In fact, even Shannon, as a quote-unquote atheist, has received that revelation according to that worldview. So what Darth is doing right there is not in not consistent with what presuppositionalism is about. I'm going to actually play that again. Let me wind that back just a couple minutes. Play that again. Like that, or would you be interested in discussing something like that? Because that's something that's of massive interest to me. Well, I, I didn't say that I personally received a revelation. I'm referring to God's natural revelation in all of creation. God is. That's the same thing. Um, the, the idea that you haven't personally received a revelation um, is not an excuse. N no, no Christian would allow you out of that, right? If you're trying to say, like, well, I didn't get a, a personal revelation from God. Um, according to Romans, everyone has been told. It is personal. So what Darth's doing there is dishonest. He's 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 mischaracterizing, mischaracterizing uh, revelation, general or special. Um, so he needs to repent for that. Constructed this world in such a way that all facts give clear testimony to that there's an ultimate creator. Um, and then I mentioned special revelation is by which God communicated with various individuals throughout biblical history. And he caused the biblical writers to write down objectively and accurately the exact message that he intended to convey about who he is and what his plan is. Um, in regards to the soul, the soul, right. from a biblical perspective, the soul is an, the immaterial aspect of man. Man is dualistic. And upon death, man continues in um, immaterial conscious existence until the general re resurrection. So that's interesting. To me, I, I can give you some of the reasons that I find it difficult to reconcile that because, it's, like I said, this is something that's incredibly fascinating to me. Um, since you can make material changes, like physiological, physical changes to the brain that demonstrably change the constitution of somebody's personality, how do you have a dualistic standard? Like, a, a, like let's say, for example, I have somebody give me a frontal lobotomy. If somebody gives me a frontal lobotomy, the, everything that constitutes me changes from my own experience of what is me to everybody else's outward experience of what is me to how I can perceive things. So does that mean that that change also simultaneously happened to a soul? Or is the soul that is you separated from the body in, in a manner that mandates that the part of you that is you in, in the soul realm is no longer instantiated in the body and they're separate? And if that's the case, then why retain the bot? Like, see, like, there's a lot of questions that follow from that for me. So do you have, do you have a perspective well, on that? Well, my view is that the, the soul interfaces somehow beyond our comprehension with our brain and our phys physicality. The fact that there's an impairment in somewhere in our brain doesn't mean there would be an impairment in our soulless consciousness, but with our, our ability to interface in the physical world. It, it, it has, there's no problem uh, from a biblical perspective on the model of man if somebody has brain damage uh, where they, they can't work their brain. When they so, die, they'll, they'll be in complete conscious existence. When, when their soul is retained with their body, their soul interacts somehow. God created its interfaces. But what I find it curious, as an atheist, what basis would you have to believe that the world around you works in any regular way? That's, a, that's an interesting shift. What I, 
from having a discussion regarding the soul to having a discussion regarding perception and the foundations for perception. I'm, I, I'm very, very interested in your thoughts on soul well, construction. Yeah. yeah, this seems kind of weird because um, he, he seems to be um, he seems to be very interested in kind of preserving the, the notion that um, she, she's attempting to try to reconcile the difference between like, you know, uh, uh, you know, can you can a soul change and can a human change over time? And, you know, it, to what extent does one change the other? Um, and in an in sort of a glib way, D Duncan or Darth is kind of bringing up this idea that it, that it doesn't matter, right? Like, <laughs> like, and this is this is kind of typical form. Like, uh, whatever he needs in order to blame people for making the wrong choice, specifically, is like you know, is um, um, uh, not not choosing God. Um. They're going to be on the hook for that, but the the weird thing about this would be like, what if what if somebody's brain were damaged in a way that beforehand they were a believer, and then they take a, a you know a rod through the brain or something like that, right? And it changes their behavior and their belief status, and and now they they don't believe. Would would Darth hold that person accountable for that belief stance relative to the the change in the human's brain, right? And and just to to a certain degree, that this is something that probably should have come up. It doesn't really it doesn't get into a, an example this specific, but um, essentially this is something that Shannon is attempting to ask. Like, okay, well you've got this thing that somehow exists independent of a person, right? But it's it, it it's also it, it it it's supposed to be something that intervenes in the actions of a person and 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 moves things in a particular way where you can you know you can make sense out of this he 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 don't, he avoids this at all costs um it's it's fairly it's pretty interesting uh, also uh let me see Show this one. One thing that's guaranteed to piss DD off is asking him what aspect of the self is separate from physical cause and effect. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of interested about that because um, I don't know if she gets to that. I don't know if she gets to that point, um, but we'll see. Yeah, well, the it's, brain is only viable either in one worldview or the other, not in both. Well, I'm not certain that I understand what you mean by the brain is viable. So I heard you say, and if I'm understanding correctly, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about interpreting what you just mentioned to me, that if something physiological happens to the brain, that pre that can prevent the soul from somehow manifesting itself in its full um, embodiment. So well, the in the soul Christian worldview, in the Christian worldview, I can have physical impairment that's either permanent or temporary that does not allow my soulishness, my soulish consciousness to function insofar as I can't do so physically. Like if I had a severe flu. Or uh, I'm coming back out of anesthesia, whereas okay. a, a frontal lobotomy would be on the extreme end of it. It, it, it. There's no problem for this in the Christian worldview. So I want to make sure I'm understanding you fully and accurately. So are you saying that you can make physiological changes that affect the soul? So if, like, so if I had a full frontal lobotomy, that changes the soul? Or are you saying that if I have a full frontal lobotomy, the soul remains the same, even though the physical instantiation of the soul is different? Oh, I would, I would believe so, because we have indication from Scripture that people are fully conscious when they, when they die, when they go on and await judgment day. Do you think that the quality of consciousness matters? Like the like the the full amount of what embodies you is that simply just living, or does that constitute uh, a certain set of abilities to perceive and interact, and um, abilities to understand and incorporate? And like, do those things matter? And does the soul evolve along with the body in that fashion, or does the soul guide the body towards its ultimate instantiation? Uh, only God knows the answer to that question, but we do have it clear from the New Testament that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Bible makes it very clear that we're going to have full conscious awareness when our body dies. Okay, and uh, for example, the rich man in Lazarus, he went to Sheol where he had full conscious existence. Where actually talk with Abraham. Uh, those those believers who have died and their souls have gone to be with the Lord, they have full conscious apparatus and in, in, in existence. They're no longer constrained by the limitations or impairments of the body. So those are both instances where the physical body has perished. It, the 
scenarios that I brought up in all instances, the physical body continues to exist from your perspective, I'm assuming either alongside the soul. So what, what's of interest to me, and perhaps I can articulate this more clearly, is if you have a physical impairment that in some way makes it very difficult for you to function, but you're still physically alive, something like a lobotomy or a coma or you know whatever. Lobotomy is probably the better example because it actually has physical impacts on your neurological structures, like your, your cortices or your frontal lobes, not in great shape after a lobotomy. So if does the soul itself change along with that physical impairment? Or does the soul at that right. point in time to, remain distinct from you? I have to step away for 60 seconds. I'll be right back. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Hope everything's okay. And yeah, me too. we are thankful to have these two speakers here tonight. I wasn't sure. I, I had a feeling maybe you had crossed swords, loosely speaking, in discussion. Never. In the past. No. You've never. Okay. Never. First mm -hmm. time. So this is the yeah. first time that we have had uh, Duncan Atheism with us, <laughs> formerly it's, known perhaps it's not as the first Darth, time that we'll, uh, we'll be saying we uh, Shannon Hughes, Mason Jar always, with the story. Uh, just a fun time. It always gets me in a great mood. So thanks for your questions. I forgot to mention, if you have a question, feel free to fire it into the live chat. If you tag me with an at modern day debate, that helps me a little bit just so I don't miss it. And then I will compile those questions into a uh, into a list. I just saw it's a funny, funny comment from Maya. She said, phoning a friend. That's funny. Um, so when Duncan gets back, we'll continue the discussion and then get to the Q&A where we'll read your questions, as many as we can. And so glad to have okay, you Okay, I'm back. I apologize Hi. for that. No We're fine. Things happen. No problem. Um, so would you like me to repeat the last question that I asked? Please. Okay. So the last question that I asked was, and, and because I'm legitimately interested in it, because it's something that perplexes me, is when there's a physiological change to the... I want to point out at this point, um, Darth is being kind of casual because like when he shows up, he's like, hey, I'm back, right? Which is a normal thing. There's a point in this where he has to leave for another 60 seconds. And when he comes back, um, James is like explaining something. And then um, Darth comes back in <laughs> and, and he's, he's less socially adept at that point. Let's just put it that way. The, the cortical structures in the brain that prevents you from being able to be essentially who you were or who you are, or who you could be, I guess, that causes a dramatic change in, in personality and ability. Does the soul exist in a segregated sense outside of you and separate from you in the physiological, physical instantiation? Or does the soul itself become affected by that physiological change? And, and the reason I'm interested in that is because if that's the case, then the physiological can, can affect the soul. And if that isn't the case, then the soul itself isn't an instantiation of us. Because if we can change the manifestation of us in the physical form, then the soul is, is, is almost an incoherent concept. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Yeah, the, when there's damage to the body, whether it's your brain or your foot, uh, it um, limits your ability of your soul to interface with the physical world. I don't think it's that complicated. How the, how the soul actually interfaces with the brain, I couldn't tell you. Only God knows. So you see the soul as separate from the physiological form then? Yeah, it's, it, it is, but it interfaces with the body. And upon death, the soul will either go awaiting judgment day or to be in heaven with the Lord. So you At can either state, they're going to be fully conscious. Okay, so you can make physiological changes that affect the body, and, me and that means that the soul can no longer have an effect on the body and the body is now completely different from the soul. Okay. So your body is separate from your soul. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, if, and, and follow my logic here, it's potentially flawed. I'm not particularly smart or clever. Um, if your soul is you and this physical instantiation is also you and you see it as like a dualistic perspective where your brain is essentially the interface mechanism that allows your soul to instantiate you through your body and then you can make a physiological change to your body that halts the soul from being able to do that the physical instantiation of you is no longer you anymore if the soul is segregated if it's separate now if the soul is separate then your body doesn't matter anymore once you make a physiological change and the drastic physiological changes make sense but then how do you account for the smaller physiological changes so how do you account for learning something and that those physiological changes in your brain changing the constitution of your soul so either the soul has influence on your brain or the brain influences the soul and i don't see how it can go both ways until that's, it's not, that's convenient. not something that i'm that's not something that i'm concerned with you're not concerned about your soul no i'm not concerned concerned about the precise mechanism of how the soul and the brain and physicality interface why aren't you I'm concerned not, I'm, I'm, I'm not because I, that's that's in god's purview of understanding not mine but you told me that earlier that you had revelation regarding truth that came directly from God in a way that you could own, that it was absolutely had to be true. So if you have re revelation regarding truth, like shouldn't this be within the purview of of what is true, what's important? Like isn't who you are essentially kind of like the most important thing? Like maybe I see it differently. Like who I am is kind of the most important thing to me and how I manifest myself, how I deal with the world, how I interact. So I think I think the point that um, Shannon's bringing up here is actually a pretty good one because. Um... I don't think that this is something that's raised enough with kind of online Christian um, 
kind of YouTube apologist is is the interaction between, uh, especially if they're dualists, right? Um, the interaction between the soul and the physical self. Um, and so I think some of the questions that she's she's kind of hinting at are are, are pretty good here. Um, that being said, um, he's poised at this point to kind of blow up this conversation here pretty soon. So it's, it's, it's going to get messy. Interact with reality, how I engage with people, all of those things are probably the most important thing that I can be concerned with, how I affect people. And if my soul is what makes me, and there's a way that I can make physiological changes to myself that divorce me from my soul, that seems an important thing to, to ponder upon. If you're concerned with yeah, your ultimate you salvation and your actions lead to your ultimate salvation, then you to being divorced from your soul could lead you to instantiating actions that lead you to no longer being, you know, up for ultimate salvation. Like you could disqualify yourself from salvation, but be divorced from your soul. So how can I be responsible for my actions and my salvation if potentially I had a physiological change that divorced myself from my soul? God will not hold you accountable for those areas that you're not culpable. What he does hold you accountable for is what he, he has made you know. For example, there, there will be... There's there's no way there's no way for him to know this, um, even scripturally. Uh, what what Darth is talking about, that there's there there's nothing to say that you're not being held accountable for th th things occurring, like because they haven't even gotten into a into a conversation about the subconscious, right? Are are you guilty of things that that are done in your subconscious, right? Are you guilty of things that you dream, um? He hasn't even, they haven't even begun to touch on that and they haven't wrestled with it. Um, and he's just automatically, no, no, you're not, you're not accountable for those things. Okay. P point out in scripture where it says that you're not. Because I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, so, now, I, d I don't think that it actually condemns you for, for dreaming evil things or whatever. Um, but he's, he's, he's pretty specifically saying, no, that you, you you're not you're not accountable for those things. Well, he's not God, so how the hell does he know? Will be people who will not be held accountable on Judgment Day who were born severely brain damaged. Okay, now how God deals with them in eternity, it would be within His prerogative or purview. Um, the, the within His prerogative and His purview. So there there He is admitting that He doesn't know. So you could have people that are supremely that, that are severely brain damaged that are, are going to be more or less accountable for certain actions that they they uh, uh, engaged in in this life. Um, how they're dealt with is going to depend up, upon God. But He's telling her that there are certain things that you're just not going to be held accountable for. And then and then goes on to imply he can't. He goes on to imply that he can't possibly fucking know that. The point I'm trying to make to you is um, God does not give us all the details of, of the mechanism of what we call man, both a body and soul. You want answers that are, that are not explicitly given in Scripture. Um, he, but he reveals to us the, the, the aspects of our nature that are most important. Doc, Dawkins agrees with that, right? That the, the reason that he's certain about... God's revelation and his story of redemption and self-sacrifice and all this other kind of stuff is that it's it's based on something that he's he's laid out. So why doesn't he know that? Well, certainly, absolutely. I, I, I want answers, just generally speaking, what, irrespective of whether they're explicitly given in Scripture, especially if you're concerned with Scripture, and one of the things you're concerned with is salvation, and you're admitting to the fact that there can be physiological changes that divorce you from a soul, then you have to recognize that there's a spectrum of physiological changes that takes place, and you have to recognize the line. It would, it would be very, very important to say, you know, is a line a lobotomy? Is a line some sort of head trauma? Is the line, what does, you know, what you does invite... all of this? What does all of this have to do with worldviews? The topic that um, was going to be on was... So now we're starting to get into he start he's going to start insisting on the worldview thing, um, and this is where he starts um, jumping the shark. Um, this this starts getting really interesting, um, and we're about twenty minutes in, and this is where you know there were there were some comments actually um, on Shannon's um, uh, comment thread when she mirrored this, and on MD MDVV where they're like, yeah, about twenty minutes into it, like um, Darth attempts to like go take over. Atheism versus Christianity. Are you taking the opposing point of view, or are you just intrigued about um, the nature of man in biblical theology? 
well, if Christianity is true, then the soul is real. That's one of the linchpins. And salvation is the most important component of Christianity, I would imagine, or at least one of the most important components of Christianity. And if you Do can't you be culpable of your idea? actions at a certain point, if you can't be culpable of your actions at a certain point, you need to determine what that point is. That should be of paramount, absolute and paramount importance. So that's one of the reasons that I am no longer a Christian is because I couldn't find that point. And as a Christian, I'm assuming that it would be it would behoove you and be important to you to explain to me why I should be a Christian. And if that's the linchpin of my deconversion, it would be absolutely imperative that you be able to articulate this to me if you would like me to be a Christian, which I think is one of the mandates. Well, what I'd like to know from you is, uh, since you are no longer uh, a Christian, that you hold to the falsity of Christianity. Is that correct? Uh, I hold to the fact that it's difficult for me to buy into Christianity. I can't so say with yes. any degree of certainty that it's absolutely false, but I can articulate to you the reasons why I find it difficult to hold to and don't hold to it myself. Okay. And I did, I, you, I did just do that. Okay. But I feel you, so we're deflecting from that. So that you don't, I'm not deflecting it. I'm not deflecting at all. This is okay. strictly on topic. Right? Sure. Okay. You want to, you, you want to believe that you're, you're no longer a Christian. Well, if you do not affirm and assert that the Christian God is, and he is the necessary precondition for all facts, then your position entails its denial, whether you realize that or not, you're then operating from a different worldview. So since you're not operating from a Christian worldview for the viability and intelligibility facts, what worldview are you operating from? So I'm assuming that you're not interested in helping me reconcile my objection. You're, you, you have nothing to object to in your non-Christian worldview. You have no foundation to stand upon. If you do, I'd like to hear it. Now, I, asked you, I answered your questions. He's kind of um, missing the fact that if his worldview is correct, then we're all operating within the same purview, right? All, all the facts that we have uh, connection to um, are, are trace back to God, and so her issues are... are they could be substantiated. This notion that he doesn't have, that, you know, um, uh, if she takes a stance that she has to be totally skeptical about everything that she approaches and that he, and then he does too, um, is dishonest. So I'll get into that a little bit later. Several times about what I believed about the soul and, and the body. And I explained to you that there's a lot about where the soul interfaces with the body that is not specified in scripture. Now, you want to go beyond what Scripture says. Certainly. Right? Now, my question to you is, since you, you've maintained that you don't hold to the Christian worldview, then you believe that viability and intelligibility for facts and science, things like that, must come from another worldview. Since it's not the Christian worldview, what is your worldview? Okay. We're starting to get into a little bit of a problem here. He believes that intelligibility and viability come from a worldview. That's what he just said. That's not been his, that's not been his posi position before. Um, at least as far as I know, um, you don't, you don't have intelligibility and viability based on your worldview. Your worldview would represent or reflect something that provides for intelligibility and viability. So he's, he's getting his own stance wrong. This isn't the first time he does that. He, he, he continues to do this. Um, and it's kind of fucked up. I'm not ultimately concerned with the foundation for facts. I, th I think that if you could reconcile that for me, then yeah, you're I, I even... you know, you know, you said you're going to start off the show, be very polite and cordial. You're being entirely evasive to my question. Now I you have evaded my question though initially. Right. Actually, but... I have not. I have I have been very polite and cordial in answering your questions about when and how the soul interfaces with the body and the brain and where our limitations, where scripture doesn't speak on it. We have to remain silent. I've answered all of those questions. Now you said that he 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 mentioned that. Um, he mentioned that it, um, where the scripture doesn't talk about the intersection between like the physical and the soul, we have to remain silent. He, he didn't actually provide any kind of scriptural backing for that. Um, so. That you, you stop believing in Christianity. So I want to know when you talk about the brain and science and all that, sure. since obviously those concepts that you believe are viable and intelligible, their viability and intelligibility doesn't come from the Christian worldview. So what worldview are they viable in? I think that's a legitimate question. Why is that an important question when it comes to the source of my objections? Another evasion. Evasion. I asked you a question. When you talk about science and sciencey things and facts, since they, they are not derived from your point of view, from the Christian worldview, because you don't, you've rejected it. I want to know when you talk about the brain and cognition, neurology, etc. I want to know what worldview you are speaking from that provides the intelligibility. Can you? I think he, I think he actually doubles down on this. Explain to me what you mean by intelligibility. Yeah, that it means something with respect to the ultimate context that it's in. Okay. He, um, 
again, he, he, he made this about worldviews. Your worldview does not provide you with intelligibility and viability. Your worldview would reflect it. God would provide, according to him, your God provides you with the consistency that you need for viability and intelligibility within your worldview. Your worldview is irrelevant, right? So this is Duncan fucking up ontology and epistemology again. Your worldview does not provide this stuff. He, he does this frequently. Your worldview is not what's providing you, but he thinks the Christian worldview provides intelligibility and all, all this kind of stuff because he, he's mainlined this stuff. It doesn't. Your worldview is just your worldview, but your worldview obviously can be wrong, right? Especially to Christians. They, a Christian can get their worldview, um, or a, a non-believer can get their worldview incorrect, right? They can they can be uh, they can they can be um, of a mindset that 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 doesn't hold, right? So intelligibility and the viability of of this kind of stuff when you're invoking facts does not come from the worldview. It only it comes from what your worldview is grounded on. He's messing up his own philosophy at this point. Ultimate context. When right. you say ultimate I context, I have to step away again for sixty seconds. I'll be right back. Sure. You bet. And very exciting discussion so far. It's, it's, uh, we want to say thanks again to the speakers. This is fun because when it comes back, you can tell at this point, at this point when he comes back, have a Duncan is a little, little bit heated. At the moment he doesn't, and so that's why there's not one there in particular for him. But we he are comes, again he comes thanks, in uh, thankful autistic. for the, the speakers that we have tonight. Sorry. This uh, channel really, the, the speakers are the lifeblood of the channel, and so. But yeah, we rarely talk about the philosophy of the channel, but basically we hope to give an equal playing ground for the deep questions, the meaningful questions of life. And whether you be Christian, atheist, Republican, Democrat, gay, straight, you know, no matter where you're from, who you, what you identify as, we're glad you're here. Hope you feel welcome. And we are trying to, you'll notice that the mods are sometimes a little bit more. By the way, I would like to point out, I did reach out to MDD uh, via email to ask for um, uh, uh, permission to actually do a review on this. I didn't reach out to Shannon. I was going to, but since it was on MDD's thing, I, I figured, like, you know, if I need to, like, um, reach out to anybody to get permission. I would reach out to him. It was it was on his channel. Um, I didn't get it. I I got like an automated uh, email response back. I didn't get anything back. Um, and, and enough people do uh, kind of debate recaps and stuff with some of his with some of these videos. So I, I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. But I I put it out there anyway. I, I wanted to make sure like, hey, is it going to be alright if I if I recap this uh, video from a little over a year ago? Again, I didn't get anything kind of individualized to me. I didn't expect to. Um, but I, I thought if, you know, if he did have an objection to it, he, he would respond to me. It, um, I know James is busy, but, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm trying to use this in, you know, um, best practices in terms of terms of service and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't take any kind of, um, he doesn't take, a, any kind of offense to this usage. So anyway, we'll go on. Or assertive. Hi, welcome back. Hi, welcome back. I well, apologize. That's something I couldn't avoid. Okay, so what I'd like to know is, since <laughs> so so he does announce himself. He comes down like, oh, hey, I'm back, and then he's like right back into questions and stuff. Not 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 even really not really a nod to to James. Like, hey, you know, sorry, you know, um, I, I'm I'm back. Just wanted to let you know, and then uh, you know, provide James an opportunity to wrap up his stuff. It's like, hey, I'm back. My apologies. By the way, my question was, Shannon. Um, <laughs> just, it runs right back into it. So here we go. Uh, Darth has Darth has gotten uh, uh, he he's gotten he's developed a lot of bad habits in his Discord days. Since you have made it clear that you no longer accept the Christian worldview, how does the concept of brain and neurology and con uh, cognition how is that intelligible in your worldview? What is your worldview, and how does it provide for that? Yeah, and I, and I asked you what you meant by intelligible, and I can't remember your response. Do you mind repeating it? Yeah, intelligibility for a fact or proposition is that it means something in its wider and ultimate context. So when you say wider and ultimate context, that, that's also confusing to me. What is the it nature seems of reality? Oh, well, what that's the, the ultimate question. Reality? Nobody really knows what the nature of reality is. I mean, several people you know assert that? that they do. How do you know I'm that? not sure. I, I, I don't really know. So you just Maybe I could, be, I could be wrong about that as well. You just, well, you, now you contradicted yourself. That I could be wrong? And then I also no, you, you said nobody knows. Oh, okay. Maybe somebody knows. The reason I love using StreamYard, well, that's easy. I can make, me, Chris Brogan, I you, can make a Chris show Brogan. like The Backpack Show. Make the Backpack Show. 
Okay, well, which is it? Nobody knows or maybe somebody knows? I'll, I'll go with maybe somebody knows. Maybe somebody knows what the okay. ultimate nature of reality okay. is. Okay, so you have no ultimate frame of reference or model of reality that will provide for the intelligibility of when you talk about facts or science or history? No, I, I don't think so. I think the only real presupposition I have is that um, I'm having perceptions of some things that I constitute as reality and perceive as reality. Um, how would that be meaningful in a world where all events are chance and spontaneous? Oh, I'm not certain. It would depend by what you mean by meaningful. If you would, you would have to qualify meaningful for if me. All events, if all events are just simply spontaneous occurrences, mm -hmm. would talking about your sense perception be meaningful and intelligible? Uh, it would be meaningful if you garnered something from it. Yeah, I don't think you understood the question. In a world where all events are simply spontaneous and not the result in of causal world. succession and laws of nature, why would invoking sense perception be meaningful in a chance world? It would be meaningful if you were able to garner something from it that allowed you to make sense um, then denying, denying sensory, uh, input in a chaotic world would basically be the same thing as saying, if I have the capacity to recognize certain things in, in the world around me, including things like say, oh, I don't know, miracles, like a guy walking on water or feeding a ma multitude with just a few loaves of bread and some, and a couple fish, right? Like I have that perception. Darth's kind of stepping on his own dick here. Um, this this notion of regularity that he's talking about is not something that Christianity relies on. Christianity re relies on a suspension of the natural order in order for um, the claims to get through. And if and if he doesn't think that that's the case, he needs to he needs to recognize of what you were perceiving. I suppose. I don't, I don't think you're understanding the question. Sense perception, is that, is that a result of causality? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by a result of causality. This is, is fascinating. Is sense perception a uh, causal succession? Can you explain what you mean by causal succession? I'm not philosophical yeah, one, one, at all in nature, so you're going to have thing, to walk me thing, through it like a, like a small child. One, one thing causes another. Okay? When you talk about sense experience, you're just talking about thoughts that you have in your head, or you're talking about touch, taste, smelling, and hearing. Well, touch, taste, smelling, and hearing are thoughts that you have in your head. If they weren't thoughts that you have in your head, then you wouldn't perceive uh, That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, are you, are you referring to causal sequencing, such as touch, taste, and smell, when you talk about perception? Or is perception simply limited to the chronology of thoughts in your head? The chronology of thoughts in your head doesn't isn't necessarily something that I understand as being. Tell me what you mean by perception. Oh, okay. So when you when you have a perception, like wh which perceptual system would you like to discuss? Because uh, they're all they're, they're all mean, specified. Tell me what you hold. What is perception? It, it would it would depend on the perceptual system that you're referring to. So it, you, if you like, they're the all they're incredibly things? complex. So if you, you want to yeah. discuss perception, you would have Can to pick a perceptual. Yes. Oh, would things? you like to talk about visual perception? Okay. So, so you, do you believe that the world around you, that there is causal sequencing resulting in a phenomenon with your eyes and your retina and then your brain? See, a lot of that doesn't actually make sense when you look at sensory perception, particularly visual perception. Like the words causal sequencing, when you look at how visual processing operates, doesn't make yeah. a great deal you're of not, sense. So you're I can, not addressing my question. You're being I'm, 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 I'm attempting to because you wanted to talk about yeah. perceptual cognition. And no, I, so we, we can talk about visual perceptual cognition. Like, I, I, I could talk about that all day, like proximal and distal stimuli. you can. I could. What I'd like to know is, how is sense perception intelligible in your worldview? What is your worldview and how does it provide for the intelligibility of individual facts, including sense perception or anything else? What is the nature of reality that provides for the meaningfulness and intelligibility of any individual facts? Oh, okay. So you're talking about proximal and distal stimuli potentially when it comes to visual perception. No, then, right? I'm talking about a metaphysical worldview. You reject and you deny the Christian worldview where God, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna get a thing of water. That's okay, sure, take your time. You reject and deny the Christian worldview as a framework on which facts can be invoked. I want to know what the worldview is that you can invoke any facts at all. Oh, whether it be okay. dogs, cats, trees, or eyesight. Did you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about how I quantify visual perception? If it, we can... I want to know what your worldview is. What is ultimate in your worldview that provides for any dependent or derivational states such as facts? See, a lot of those are, are fantastic, like in interesting words, but I, I think they're intended to like kind of lead me towards something, but they ultimately don't. There's no specificity in them. Uh, perhaps there's a worldview. Do I have a worldview? Oh, but I think everybody does ultimately. Okay. I'm not sure what that if I'm not sure. What is my worldview? I don't think yeah, anybody can fully articulate a worldview. Like to fully articulate how you perceive and enact your your self, what, like your perception of yourself in reality, to be able to articulate that in a concise and succinct format. Do you believe, do you is, believe in causality and laws of nature? Can you explain to me what you mean by causality and then I'll, I'll have yeah, that, 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 that there's a cause and effect relationship in the chronology of events and among those chronology of events there are regularities and continuity so are you saying causality means that like cause and effect like if if i hold up this chapstick like I, i'm interacting right, it's, with it's, it it's really simple did you eat dinner tonight yes why because i was hungry
Like, why, why, would, why would eating resolve your hunger? Because I've experienced hunger in the past and I've eaten and it resolved my hunger. Okay, so there's a cause and effect relationship with events. So there's a perception. There's a physiological perception. Okay. Do you, I have do the physiological you, perception that I'm hungry and I have the experience okay. of being hungry. And in the past, when I've had that experience, I seek out food and it satiates that hunger. So okay. when so, I'm satiated, so I see you telling me that you do believe in cause and effect? I'm telling you that in this particular instance, in the example that you've used, the way I would justify eating would be that I've had previous experiences. Do you believe where, in cause and effect? Do I believe in cause and effect? Yes. I believe that we have perceptions and that I, 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 there I are like I, I keep on invoking perception. I think you're being entirely being evasive. And no, let's, well, let's, 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 okay. just, let's just one sec, just to be sure that we get like the full explanation from Shannon for what she's like her perspective in particular. <laughs> let's just uh, let it go to the point where she's like, you know, has a period on the on the statement. Yes. This is what's intriguing to me. So I was very, very excited to come in here and have a conversation, but I don't actually feel as though that's your ultimate motivation. When we initially started talking, I, you mentioned your perspective and I brought up the soul because I was legitimately interested in having a dialogue about it. And I feel as though, even though there's questions ultimately that I had previously that weren't answered in regard to that topic, it was ultimately shifted. And I, it, this could be wrong, but this is my perspective of the conversation and how I'm feeling about how it's going, is that you have been attempting to elicit a specific response set from me in order to, to lead me in a certain direction that <laughs> allows you the opportunity. Shannon's not wrong, and she's getting dangerously close to the truth. <laughs> to have a planned response set ready. So it's not really a conversation. It's you continuously either interrupting me or asking follow-up questions that could potentially lead me towards a designated answer that you're ready for so that you have another mm -hmm. available response set that leads you to your ultimate conclusion of this conversation, which was potentially predetermined before we went in. Did you have a predetermined conclusion before we went in of how you wanted this conversation to go? Or were you legitimately interested in having a dialogue with me about the things that I think? I'm interested in having a dialogue on the show. I was invited on here to discuss Christianity versus atheism. Were you given that information? I was asked if I wanted to come on and have a conversation with you. And I believe that having a dialogue, Christianity versus, versus atheism, the thing that I brought up initially, which is what sparked the conversation, which is what I was hoping that we would have a dialogue about is, you know, my perspectives about why I'm an atheist versus why, you know, you're a Christian. And my question- Why, are, this, why are you an atheist? You're doing it again. This is fascinating. I, I feel as though you're- Yeah, don't listen, Shannon, Shannon, I consider that entirely rude and passive aggressive. Okay. And I consider that cheap. And now don't, you're putting don't, don't me on the me, defensive. Don't, don't give me this psychobabble psychoanalysis. Okay. I asked you a question, right? Why okay. are you an atheist? And then you're turning it into a little verbal game. Because I have, difficult recon I have difficulty reconciling no, you're the playing, soul. you're playing a little game. You're playing a little game and I don't appreciate it. And I, I consider it passive aggressive. I ask you okay. why you're an atheist. Can because I have difficulty that? reconciling the soul. How does, how does it follow that you have unanswered questions and difficulties that there is no God? Because I have difficulty reconciling the soul. Repeating the same answer doesn't answer my question. Th that is the answer to your question. I consider that cheap. And now I you're putting me on. I, I just want to rewind this because the what he what he puts to her as a question is ridiculously clunky. I'm just going to play this again and then I'll comment. On the defensive. Don't, don't give me this psychobabble psychoanalysis, okay? I asked you a question, right? Why okay. are you an atheist? And then you're turning it into a little verbal game. Because I have, difficult I have difficulty reconciling no, you're the soul. Playing, you're playing a little game. You're playing a little game and I don't appreciate she, she it. Has, she has given her reason. She, 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 she gave it at the beginning. And, and now Darth is acting like he doesn't understand. Like, and and I, I think there, I don't think this is a problem necessarily. I don't think that Darth is being dishonest here. He, he didn't, he didn't actually take this seriously when she brought it up. Her issue with Christianity um, and, and claims of spirituality or, or whatever, um, they, they kind of reside in explanations about the soul or dualism, th these kinds of things. She's got real problems with those. Um, there's, there's inconsistencies based on those explanations, and that's, that's what she can't square. And so she's not a believer. Um, that's one of, that's one of the, the, the underpinnings for her. She mentioned this at the beginning. He didn't take that seriously. It's pretty clear that in that because now he's now he's like, hey, I wanted I wanted your reasons for why you're an atheist. She gave them. He didn't pay attention. He doesn't care, right? It doesn't matter what her reasons are, right? The only thing that matters to Darth is that, um, there, because it, you know from Darth's presuppositional apologetic, there are no reasons for rejecting Christianity. There can't be. So. There's, there's there's nothing there you know he can ask the question but he's asking it as a as a um it's just a formality right it, it doesn't mean anything he's he's asking it in order to get to a to, to the next question 
he's not um, he doesn't really care. Uh, but th this 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 question that he asks her is is interesting. Appreciate it, and I, I consider it passive aggressive. I ask you why okay. you're an atheist. Can because I have difficulty no? reconciling the soul. How does how does it follow that you have unanswered questions and difficulties that there is no God? How does it follow? How does it follow that you have questions or difficulties reconciling that there's a God? He doesn't. He doesn't even know. He didn't even remember where she started. Why is he asking? How does it follow? He was in the process of asking the question. She had to remind him that her objection has something to do with the soul, and then he is getting into how does it follow that you still have questions about the existence of God? This doesn't make sense. But he just asked it. Uh, Benghazi writes, uh, speaking of a DD fanboy, I was trying to talk to Serb at the tail end of Speed Show earlier. Was that today, Benghazi, or was that, um, cause I, I don't know if I caught, I, I didn't catch Speed Show. If he did one this weekend, I didn't, uh, you know, I haven't caught it. But if he, if he did one um, Monday through Friday, I probably, I probably would have seen the uh, notification. Because it seems like he, he usually goes live a couple hours before I get off work. I, I usually see the notification and I can't join. Anyway, let's play this. Because I have difficulty reconciling the soul. Repeating the same answer doesn't answer my question. Th that is the answer to your question, though. How did yeah. I, I am an atheist. One of the I, reasons I am an atheist. Can you repeat back to me my question I asked you? Why are you an atheist? I said, how does it follow that you have unanswered questions or difficulties about the soul and the brain that there is? See? So his initial question was... what she repeated but then he wants he wants how does it follow it it follows that she's got difficulties with it i don't understand why he has an issue with this what he's trying to point out doesn't make sense but he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna harp on her for this he's gonna make this about her there's no god because you want to get me back to that's interesting. Okay. Because you, you want to get me on a path. This is what here I was just saying. We're doing yeah, no, here we go again. It's absolutely here's right. It's path, fascinating. Path you don't want to have a dialogue with yeah, me about yeah, my actual objections and concerns. What you yeah, want to do is get me on a path. Listen, Shannon, I asked you a question. That's a manipulation you, you tactic. Again. Oh, you're talking about One interrupting second. now with a big smile on your face and you're I am. Me. I consider uh, that rude. Why don't we just take a quick timeout just to, just to mention. So, uh, in the event that if Shannon's trying to make a case that the soul in some way, there's some sort of incoherence on the Christian worldview with a soul, like maybe if that's kind of where she's going, like, that seems like it's kind of like fair game. Like, you know, it doesn't seem like it's too outside of the ballpark. Uh, at the same time, like I can see how Duncan, I know where you're going and, and yours is within the ballpark as well. So I think that, I mean, I might be wrong about this, I, but I think you guys are both within the ballpark of like the, you know, so. It's pretty clear here that James doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I appreciate the fact that he's trying to be a moderator and he's trying to be a peacemaker and stuff, but he's not, this, this, this isn't working. Like it's, it's pretty clear here that um, like, um, if, if he wants to call out Shannon for anything, it might be for like conflating terms or trying to shift shift debate tactics or whatever. But she's a pinch hitter. She came in three hours, like he gave her three hours notice. Like she came in for somebody else for a debate topic, so he can't really like judge her. Um, but then on top of it, you know, he's just like, oh, okay, well, I think Darth Darth's got a good point here as well. Darth doesn't really have a good point at this at this stage. He's not making good. He's 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 trying to he's trying to paint her into a corner. Um, so whatever's happening in this at this stage of the discussion is not um, is not reliable, um, but he's trying to like oh you know I think I, I I think both of you are making good points blah 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 no they're not um, I think Shannon's making certain points that Darth is not willing to address Darth is a, it, Darth is doing she's starting to clue in on this and she's starting to uh, she's starting to demonstrate some fascination with the fact that he is he's attempting to. Um, uh, pigeonhole her in a kind of a rhetorical um, framework that's going to, like, you know, uh, uh, that he's going to, like, force her to cash in at some point. Um, and she starts she starts getting really giddy about that once she realizes it, and it's kind of fun. Um, but, um, yeah, he's not, um, in terms of, like, um, charitability uh, with regards to how these people are, like, 
um, talking to each other, how they're dealing with each other. Um, Dar Darth is not, um, he, he's, he's, he's not being honest. Um, or at least, he doesn't even have a, a comprehension of what fair is in this conversation because he's not interested in hearing about what Shannon's um, concept is in terms of her own epistemology, right? He's trying to railroad what he thinks a standard of epistemology is based on what he thinks an ontology dictates an epistemology should be and push that forward, which is what it is to most people. If we get back to that, that might be most substantive. Uh, yeah, I'd like my question to be answered. How does it follow that because you have problems with the concept of the soul, that it follows from that that there is no God? You are an atheist, right? Yes. Good. How, is it, how does that follow that there is no God? Because if the, you, you've referenced the Bible prior, right? The scriptures. I'd like to know from your point of view, since you are an atheist, how is it that there is no God? Because if there is a God. That I think is weird. She asks kind of a simple clarifying question and he can't acknowledge that. He has to go in and, 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 and make an issue out of it. That's telling to me, but. There should be a soul because that's a concept from the scriptures. And I don't believe how, it's plausible. How, how, does it, how does it follow that if there's an ultimate ultimacy of reality that possesses personality, and we call that God, that there would be any state of affairs from your point of view? If I assume that that God is the foundation for logic and that the scriptures are true. I didn't mention the scriptures. I asked you, how does it follow that if there's a God, you would necessarily understand the nature of a soul? Maybe. Why maybe wouldn't you talk about the scriptures if it's a Christian God? I, I, oh, I am. But right now I'm inquiring about your atheism and its intelligibility. Okay. Now, what I want to know from you is your position is that there is no God. So basically you're telling me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that there is no God because you don't understand how a soul might interact with a, with a body. Now, here's the question. How is it that there is no God? How is it that there is no God? Because one of the tenets of the God that I am speaking about that was dictated by him was that we would have a soul. And if one of the tenets that was dictated by God is that we have a soul, the soul should be a coherent concept, and I find it difficult to make it coherent. Um, what you're addressing is a difficulty with the Christian God vis-a-vis -vis the soul. That, yes. is not, that would not entail atheism. Atheism is the denial. But it would discount Christianity. Are you discounting uh, Christianity? Uh, Are you well, saying right, that, right, that right, did right, I just yeah. disprove Christianity? <laughs> no, no, you didn't do anything. Oh, okay, before. so you're not fighting for Christianity, you're, then you're fighting you for deistic perspective. What you have done is you've, a, you've answered a question I didn't ask. Now, atheism is not the disbelief in some gods. Mm -hmm. Atheism is not the disbelief in the Christian God. Atheism is the disbelief and denial of all gods. So since you are a self-proclaimed atheist, I want to know how it is there is no ultimate creator God. Oh, there could, I, I, you could potentially slide me into a deistic perspective, but I wouldn't worship that God because whatever. Like if, 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 uh... Anyway, I just want to uh, give, give a shout out to a few high profile people just popped up here um, that are, that are uh, deigning to view my live stream. One is Cider and Port, that's uh, Stephen from Ireland. Greetings, Stephen um, and Slancha. If you're not drinking whiskey, um, well, then you're not Irish. Um, and um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean that to, be, to come off that hostile. And also J.L. Warren from, I think, The Plot Hole. And there's a couple other channels that he ha ha happens upon. Um, I like J.L. Warren. Um, he's had some roundabouts with um, uh, with Darth Dawkins. Um, in fact, he actually had a little bit of a chat with the host of The Plot Hole where he was going on, you know, kind of a like a rundown of like various confrontations that he's had with a guy um but anyway uh, um proper greetings to jl warren and also cider and port um although now that i think about it cider and port maybe stephen is only drinking the cider maybe he doesn't drink the whiskey anymore because i know his friend drinks the port it, and and his friend does like the madeira um he's quite a fancy lad um uh, anyway uh, let's see here. I'm backstage, just letting you know. Uh, yeah, I did hear you pop in. Hang on, let me take a look. Hello, Jay. Hi, Jeff. Your your buddy your buddy Jill's here. Everybody's I, favorite. I I did say that. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, also announce. Please don't. Uh, no one mute or time out or do anything to Jill unless he does something specifically 
anti, you know, uh, anti-human, you know, if he does something that's, you know, you know, anti-trans, anti-woman, and what, well, Jeff, which, which is kind of Jeff. his existence, but don't, Jeff, don't, that's, don't, that, don't ban him, no, by the way. That's, that's too loose. Uh, just him being here is anti-human. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, cider and port. No cider tonight, but all you need to be Irish is to have green blood in your veins. Oh, so it's port. It's port that's here tonight. Yes. So uh, the Madeira is here. It's the port rather than the cider. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, good to go. I think I called you Thomas or something like that. I just I gave him a name and just started calling him that um, and, and, and irritated the shit out of him. Or maybe I thought I irritated the shit out of him. I probably didn't actually do that. But anyway. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, JL Warren, he's still he's still watching. So yeah. Anyway, so um, for anybody that's trying to catch up, we're just watching this Shannon Q uh, discussion with uh, Duncan Atheism uh, with Darth Hawkins. Um, oh, and Mr. Lizard's back. Good for you. Um, by the way, um, it looks like things are getting slightly um, touchy between Geo Sam and Richard. If you guys want to come in later on um, and have a discussion, we can. Um, or not. It's up to you guys. Uh, oh, hey, let me go. But anyway. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna keep playing this, and then we'll see. Um, he's getting to a point now. What are we, 40? Yeah, we're over 40 minutes in. Um, this only goes on for an hour and a half. There's a part in this where he starts kind of like... I can't remember exactly what he starts doing. He, he, he kind of loses the plot on her. Um, it gets really weird. So... You have also, 28 watching right now. Yeah. I'm a, Good I'm Lord. A, I'm a popular lad. Ba big ballin'. Um, it happens when I... When, any, anytime I feature the Dawkins, which lately I've been doing because I've been I've been poking at his apologetic... Um, th thanks to Otangelo, largely. Like, Otangelo was like, hey, I've been learning a lot from Darth Dawkins, la, la, la. And I'm like, okay, well, all right, I'm, I'm going to go back and... Take a look at some of his other videos where he's talked to other people and stuff, and I've been. I've doing already, that. I've already had my dose of Otangelo today. I was over on Speed's live chat, or in his stream yard, that went over like a fart in a car. Okay, so was Steve was 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 he live earlier? Yeah, Speed. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, talking God about. Uh, he was talking about Pine Creek's conversation on. Um, damn it. Yeah, it's Chewy's for the dog. Um. Yeah. He. Uh. It was. Uh. He, he was going over a little bit of what happened with Doug. And on John Maddox's channel, sorry. So how did? Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. I thought that was kind of cool because he he was. Um, it was like Pine Creek versus like you know half a dozen, half a dozen Christians. Um, I I didn't understand like what he was doing in terms of. Um, um I I don't know how he ended up there. Um, I, did, I didn't. I didn't jump into the mean? stream early enough. Like I, I don't know how like Pine Creek ended oh. up on that particular. Like who's oh, because was that? It was it was John Maddox's stream, and he was. We can really hear you breathing, by the way, Jeff. <laughs> Just to let you know. Um, background noise. Uh, so he can, was can John. You me, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, yeah, you're fine now, but I can't hear you breathe as much. So the, um, yeah, it was John Maddox was basically critiquing Pine Creek's video. He did a short clip where uh, it was I can't remember who had the video, but it was like twelve YouTube Christians, and they were asking him, "What's your favorite argument for God?" And so they um, they went through and you know basically the video was you know these guys say oh cosmological argument teleological argument precept whatever blah 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 and they go down the line and uh what pine creek did in his video goes well you're actually your best argument for god should be the resurrection of jesus christ and so john was critiquing that as doug putting a spin on it and taking everything out of proportion and so pine creek joined and they talked about it and yeah, it was basically Doug um, nice. slapping away a whole bunch of dick waving. Hmm. Well, that does sound interesting. Yep. Okay. It's a good, it, was a, it was a good conversation. All right. But yeah, well, it, anyway. turned into a, it turned into a lot of them just basically. It almost sounded like an intervention. 
Like you had just telling them what Doug is. Like you're doing this, you're doing that. This is on you, blah, 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 blah. It turned into a lot of that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this out because um, there's not there's not too much of this, but like I said, there's um, there are a couple of there's a couple of weird clarifications that he he brings up that I think that, that not not clarifications, but um, Darth tries to get into these kind of weird um, stances that I well if they pop up I'll I'll, I'll point them out, um, but he, he he at this point he's trying to pigeonhole her into the whole like she must be like a total skeptic like yeah that's what, I re- that, that's what he's trying to do to her right now like you have to be a total skeptic if you're a non-believer yada 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 even though like he's a total skeptic <laughs> like, yeah, that's, I re- that's the basis of his, his argument yeah i remember watching this and it was it was i didn't agree with some of the way that shannon was coming at or, or, or some of the responses that she gave but overall i think she did a good job in this conversation of at least keeping her cool with that guy so yeah yeah uh and by the way uh for anybody in the chat uh that's that's watching or following i'm not trying to like set up richard and geo to like have like a feud or anything like that but if you guys want to actually talk to each other and you want me to like bring you in to like host a conversation like i can do that a little bit when we when i get done with this if you don't care one way or the other if you just want to resign it to uh you know just just the comments that you're making here that's fine too it doesn't matter to me um uh, but, but, you know, I, I respect you both. And if you guys want to like float your ideas one way or the other past me, feel free. Um, Reese 2. Is Darth watching? Um, no, but I imagine like, well, check and see if anybody's downvoted this video. It, no, nobody's it, it, downvoted just yet based on mine, but I would okay. say that <laughs> I would, it wouldn't surprise me if there are people that are part of that, you know, part of that small group. Um, mm-hmm that are probably recording this or watching it for any kind right. of, I mean, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know that, I don't know that Otangelo would downvote it, but I, I'm sure that he would like shunt it off to like, Oh, there's, um, there's, there's a downvote now, but that's, that's Jill. That's that, Jill. Yeah. That, that, I was going to say that could be Jill. Um, and, and by, again, I'm just going to tell everybody here, um, at, at, you know, as a favor to me, as, as, as the, the, the founder of the feast, that kind of thing, do not, do not, um, mute or kick, uh, Jesus is Lord, please. Um, and again, unless he um, does something f- fascistic. Hang on, I need to point that out. Um, overtly fascistic. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, what is this? Jermaine Jer- the Saint. I loved Pine Creek's latest discussion with Darth, where Darth threw Jesus under the bus more times than Peter did. I love Pine Creek's latest discussion with Darth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did he, yeah, he denied it more than three times. It was pretty interesting. And that's Gerada Dasein. Um I've I've always liked that username. Um mostly because it is German. Um anyway. All right, let's see here. Let's spin this back up and we'll <laughs> hold, on, hold on hold on a second. <laughs> Reese says, Jay, hook me up with Rose and I told him I will not be responsible for that. No. No. Jay, hook me up with who's Rose? Rose is what I basically I I have I have deemed her the female P Mars. Oh. She <laughs> okay. is she is fucking crazy. Okay. All right. Yep. I don't know who she is, but I, I don't know how to I, in all honesty, Reese, I don't know how to hook you up with her. Um next time Green Soul is on, if you're like seeing one of my I know he frequents my channel every once in a while, ask him. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's how she came in, and I will never forgive him for that. I like Green Soul. He's, that was my first time, I think, talking to him on the stream. Seems like a really cool guy, but he knows her, and so did Serb. Serb was familiar with her as well. But, yeah, just I am I am not a better person for having met her. I just want to I want to point out, uh, GSM, thanks for the author, but it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, Richard Manson wrote, your feels a little re- – no, no he's, he's responding to uh, to GSM. Uh, yeah. Gerada da sein. <laughs> es ist doch auf Deutsch. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Benghazi. Uh, Reese Tupona. I'm reminded of the saying, don't stick your dick in crazy. Yeah. If if anyone knows what... Uh, in fact, I'm going to ask uh, Gerada da sein if 
if you can translate don't stick your dick in crazy into German, because I feel like that would be even crazier <laughs> if you could do that and post that in the chat. <laughs> I would be very appreciative. Look at uh, Simon's, Simon's funk is laugh out loud. Rose, ha, 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 ha. See, everybody <laughs> knows this person. People know this this lady other than me. And, and when I was talking to her, like it was going to, if that had been an actual like one out, like an in-person meeting, I think it would have come to blows. I think I would have actually punched a woman. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I'm surprised. Good doubting Thomas says, I think you, I think you will like Rose at Jefferson. So yeah, maybe, you know what? He could be right. I, I might like, I might like her. Um, cause I, I, no. I, I, I kind of like, I kind of like Candace, even though I disagree with almost everything she says, including when she says she likes us. Like, she's like, I like Jay. I like Jefferson. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> disagree. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's play this out. If there was some sort of deism or pantheism, then like you could propose that to me and it would potentially make sense. And I would say, oh, oh, sure. your atheism right hey, now? Jeff, can you pause that for just a minute? Sure, go ahead. Uh, Maya, no, uh, to be specific, I didn't rage quit my own stream. I took it off air and ended it because I knew that 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 was going nowhere. And we talked probably for, I think, two hours off air, just did off any, air alone. Did, did anybody watch Praise's stream last night, early this morning? Which one he, is so the last one that he did, it's it's available on his channel. It was like, I don't know, probably like 10, 10 hours ago at this point. Okay. I showed up into it. Like, I think it's like, it's it's over six six hours long. I show up in in the sixth hour, right? And I had a, I had a prolonged conversation with uh, with Praise and with uh, Veckel. Right, Veckel was on there. Oh, is this how you ended up possibly agreeing to have another debate with Gavin? Right, and, and so the reason that I reviewed it this morning was to find the point where I agreed to the debate, but I couldn't find it because it just ends. He just, he, it just, it just cuts off. I can't find, like, I can't find the point where, like, uh, uh, Gavin and I actually discussed like terms or whatever, like what we were even going to debate. So yeah, if anybody's interested, watch that. I'm in there for like the last thirty or forty minutes of the debate, and then it just like for whatever reason, praise just like chopped it at that point. Like they, they we're like I, I think somebody's actually in the middle of a question, and it just like ends. It's really weird. So yeah, uh, take a look at it. It's it's uh, it's an interesting one. Oh no, I could I could sense the judgment coming off of you, Maya. Wait, when? Is she goes, no judgment. She goes, no judgment. We all understood. <laughs> I can, yeah, I no. can still, yeah, but either way. Yeah. I, I, you know, and I was, I was enjoying some, some IPA for probably the last time and just, I was really enjoying it. And then she comes in and I'm like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be funny as fuck. But in order to really have like an <laughs> open conversation, there is no way I was going to stream that shit live because things were going to be, things were going to be said in jest that most people would think is, is, is being serious. I, 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 I fully expect and appreciate the fact that like when I lose when I lose the plot, right? Eventually, like when I lose it and I go like full on like you know Tucker Carlson or something or you know Green, Glenn Greenwald, and just like you know start like ranting and raving, Maya will be the first one to like call my shit out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I guarantee, like she will be there. Like yeah, Jeff's a yeah, <laughs> he's he's a fucking troll. <laughs> yeah, like at one point I was gonna end and I was like looking at the beer and I'm like. I'm going to need more beer for this. And I actually left to go grab more beer so that I was still okay to drive. Went, picked up two more cans of beer and came back. I'm like, all right, now I'm ready da to do this. Doubting Thomas, Doubting Thomas is actually conflating. He's actually combining two different um, languages. He's saying Danka Papi. No, it's Danka <laughs> Fati. <laughs> <laughs> Papi is Spanish. Danka is German. So if you want to keep it all uh, off Deutsch, uh, it's Danka Fati. <laughs> <laughs> Reese 2.0 says, "Spooky, you totes smash." You totes smash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. He says, "He goes, I don't know, Rose. I feel as if I'm missing out." And then Reese said, "Spooky, you totes smash." I, I, I love, I love the live stream that I get. Like, I mean, the live comments. Uh, this is the thing. Like, I don't, I don't need a lot of, I don't need a lot of uh, subscribers. Like the subscribers that I have, when they show up and leave comments, they're they're, they're funny as hell. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> Let him keep the stapler head clockwork Rex. That's from <laughs> that's from Richard. That's yeah. from Richard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, did the, you, yeah. Well, did you see? Did you see? Well, the end of one of my streams, I said, "Oh, as I end this, take a look at my new Funko Pop," and it was one of Milton. Oh God. Okay. I was like, I got, I got the, I got a Funko Pop of, of Gavin right. Merleman. So you've you've already thrown things off enough because uh, I was making good. Uh, you know, I made it forty. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go this. ahead. Go ahead. But now things are turning into one of your hangouts where we can only do two I'll minutes at a time. I'll, I'll shut the fuck up. I'll yep. Shut the fuck up. Go. Yep. All right. So let's play this out. Um, and Meow. also. I'm trying. Hey, calm, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Uh, like I said, there, there's something coming up here where he he makes a statement about um, what you know something about his epistemology or something like that, which is actually kind of alarming. But here we go. No, I, I'm probably like if, if we're looking philosophically, I'm probably more of a temporal sort of agnostic than I am an atheist. Oh, agnosticism is indirect atheism. Okay. Sure. Okay. Fine. Okay, I'm, so like, you, I'm, you, I'm suspending call, judgment on the yourself, proposition. You're not. And, you're not suspending judgment on it. I'll, I'll explain to you why. Oh. Ask you oh here we go. Do you affirm and assert that God, a personal absolute creator, is the necessary precondition of all facts? Do well, you, you just said a that? personal absolute creator, though. That wouldn't be a deistic perspective, and that's kind of like okay. smuggled okay. in there a little bit. I think. Okay, Shannon, you're evading the question. No, you said you personal, assert, but we were talking about deism, and you're attempting Shannon, to refute agnosticism. Okay. The personal one, yeah, I refute that. Personal for sure. Okay. Okay. So you do not assert that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts. God in general. No, I, whatever. No, no. You don't assert it. Okay, good. Then then facts are viable and intelligible without the necessity of God. That's your position. Sure, mm. with or without, whatever. Okay, that's an outright denial of the existence of God. I so, said with or without. That's, that's not an outright denial. That's a suspension. No, no. Let me explain to you why that's incorrect. That's a common mistake, right? Oh, okay. You can, people say, oh, well, I'm not saying I don't know. I asked you a very specific question. I said, do you assert and affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? And you said no. Is that correct? No. Do you assert and affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. How do you know that? Okay, he revealed it. Now, do you assert that God See is a prerequisite for all facts? Did you catch oh that? Uh, no, oh, I was the... too busy listening to you breathe. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, you know, I just watched uh, Unhinged with uh, Russell Crowe, and so mm -hmm. I, I, I've really kind of embraced the the fat the fat white guy psycho. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if anybody hasn't seen that movie, uh, there's no reason to watch it. It's it's a it's a it's a wipe away movie. Um, but he's wearing a fat suit. It's funny. He's wearing a fat suit in it. And he just looks portly as hell. Um, and and you, that that kind of makes sense because they they filmed it down in New Orleans, so he's always sweating. No, I. No, no. I think that was his real weight because he put on weight for uh, that show where he played no. Roger Ailes. Nope. He. Um, no, nope. he, he, they they asked him if he would gain weight for the role, gain ex, gain more weight, and he was like, no, he wasn't comfortable with it. They actually put like a, a fat suit on him. He's wearing. Oh, because I wearing, saw because I, I saw a video of him, and it looked like he had a pretty substantial gut on him. And this uh, was a, like a video. Well, he does he does anyway, but then they put one on him. Like I mean, like his, his gut is sticking way the hell out, and I was just like, that dude looks fucking pregnant. Like I couldn't figure out like why. Like, did he gain weight for this role? Like, you know, because I, kn I know he can be a little bit method when it comes to some of this stuff. But, like, did he do that for this particular role? No, he didn't. Uh, turns out he was actually a little uncomfortable with that. And they were like, hey, we want you to be, like, an extra fatty. And he's just like, yeah, about that. <clears throat> he was. I think he was actually in the process of trying to lose weight for another role that he had coming up. And he was just like, yeah. I, 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 and, and he wasn't comfortable with it. Because as you get older, like, you know, gaining, losing and gaining weight is not a good thing to do. Yeah, um, the only person that I know that's actually been comfortable with that has been uh, John Goodman, who is a psycho. Um, he's just like, oh, I can, I can gain and lose weight like clipping fingernails, like. Which speaking speaking of um, uh, the performance that uh, uh, Russell Crowe gives in Unhinged, he's kind of like um, John Goodman's character from uh, Big Lebowski. Oh yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. Anyway, check it out, people. But anyway, what, what were you, uh, what were you wanting to say? Sorry. Oh, uh, well, just one. We can still hear you breathing, which is, uh, it's not as bad now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the more you, the more you bring it up. <laughs> yeah. The uh, well, originally I just put it in the private chat, but anyway, and and somebody else, Reese, mentioned that you were possibly eating your mic. 
No, it's it's either in front of my mouth or I'm adjusting it. Like when you would when you mention that I'm breathing, I try to adjust it away from my head. Like I just mm -hmm. dial it up towards my forehead, but otherwise it's just in front of my face. So uh, yeah, okay. Um, it just happens to be in your jet stream that is your sinuses. Uh, no, there was something there uh, that he that he said, and this is oh yeah, what I was going to say is is this is where he basically tries to dial her in. This is where Dark Dawkins does his typical. I'm going to take you from agnostic or whatever you think you are and make you into the atheist that I think that you are and then beat on that. That's that's really what I wanted to get to. I, I think most people recognize that coming, though. Actually, J.L. Warren points this out. Uh, the reason for the weight gain was because of the painkillers he's always chewing through the film. The tools he uses indicate he was a construction worker injured on the job. Yeah, and they actually uh, indicate what his jobs were. Um, he was a contractor before he was fired from a company right before his um, retirement. And then he worked for a construction company and then he worked for like a maintenance company or something like that. And they got fired. Um, so he's like on like, yeah. Uh, this is the character in that movie. Yeah. So yeah, unhinged. Uh, okay. J J Dale Warren's like, yeah. Um, Cause yeah, his, it, uh, the, the Russell Crowe character is like chewing like Narcos through the whole thing. Yeah. Which makes sense because, uh, given that weight gain and some of the stuff that he's doing, it's like, yeah, uh, you'd lose weight if you continued to murder people like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh -huh. it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, stop. He's a fatty. It truly was a wipe away movie because I don't even remember those details, and I watched it. You watched Unhinged. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep, I downloaded it when it first became available um, through my source. I like the girl. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't place where I'd seen her from, but um, she was in a movie called Slow West. Yes. Um, which, if 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 no one has seen that movie, watch that movie. That's a really good movie, especially for the photography. Um, but the ending of it is really good, um, and she she has a really interesting part in it. She's she's kind of like the the damsel in distress that the main character is trying to save, um, and that's uh, Cody Smith McPhee, and uh, yeah, it's a good movie, and she she's really good in it. <clears throat> it doesn't end the way that you expect. Anyway, yep, you're good. Is Jay a pirate? Uh, Reese 2.0, is Jay a pirate? Yes, he might be. Um, Jay Warren, lol, at Jefferson Special. I, I run a horror podcast, so we go into little details like that. Oh, Jay Warren runs a horror podcast. Oh, my God. My man. Uh, uh, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> this, is, this is where I start wondering whether or not he's got the other half of this amulet. Uh, my younger brother... Um, collects horror films and loves horror movies. He's a horror f freak. He's he's a complete and an, an entire horror nut. He's not a uh, cine He's not even a cinephile. He's a horophile. No, that's the thing. Like, if, if you asked him, like, "Hey, have you ever watched Breathless?" By you know, you know, Godard, he'd just be like, "No." Like he doesn't care. But you know, if 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 you haven't watched um, the New York Ripper by um, Fulci. He'll be like, "Why haven't you watched that?" <laughs> like, because he, he's a fucking idiot. Um, so yeah, like Zombie Two. Yeah, I'm waiting for the 4K re release of it. Uh, yeah, Jail Warren. Uh, anytime you want to talk about horror movies, bring me on. Um, <laughs> uh, I do enjoy horror films, and what I know about horror films, I owe all to my younger brother, who is a horror movie nutcase. Um, yes, he is. It, and I owe my education in horror films to him because I love movies. Um, but in terms of like horror films, especially the crappy ones, no, he's he's got that. He's got that yeah. shit on lock. Uh, uh, ben guys, <laughs> Jay Warren, give the title and I'll link it. Yes, please, give that title. I'll link it and I'll link your. Uh, I like your horror webcast if that's what you're uh, if that's what you're looking into because uh, the only other thing that I really like talking about other than religion is movies. Well, you could give him you could give him mods and then he could link whatever he needs to. Ooh, yeah, I could. I am. Excellent point. Thank you. Add moderator, Jail Warren. You have become a moderator. You got that spanner.
Uh, and our live show is Wednesday at 7 p.m. on YouTube. Nice. Ben Gaz Weekend Horror. Everywhere podcasts are found. And our live show is Wednesday at 7 p.m. on YouTube. Nice. All right. That's seven, I'm assuming 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I'm not the looking power. at your screen right now. <laughs> Jail Warren already has the power, and uh, he's allowing it to go to his head because he's, he's corrupt as shit. Uh, Danny Thomas J. Pasek is a rusty sheriff's bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's another way of saying I'm a butthole pirate. Yeah, exactly. By the way, there's actually a new documentary out about the butthole pirates. Uh, <laughs> or not not the butthole pirates, butthole surfers. Uh, if anybody's interested. So, all right, let's play this and hopefully we'll wrap this up. Yoink. God is, uh, no, I don't, but you do because he revealed okay. it to you, right? No, okay, so I'm no, gonna, okay. Let's, this is gonna be fun. Let's, I'm gonna assume I'd your like perspective. To I'd like okay. to finish. You want to finish where you're leading me you're to? Being, this is a manipulation it. tactic. Wait, which, no, it's not manipulation. You can stop. No, it really is. Babble, you know, you're, you're, you're doing leading right me right. towards like, your desired okay. outcome wait, in the conversation. Wait, 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 we don't want to have a conversation. This is an interrogation that is leading me towards your desired outcome. I asked you a legitimate question about your age. Real quick. Alonius, I would finish. Place cock and ass. Yeah, at this point, she's not wrong. Right. <laughs> but she's not she's not wrong and what she's, she's like i'm pretty sure that you're actually trying to point me in a direction and trying to get me to like agree to something I'm like yeah yeah yep yep, yep that's yep. exactly what he's doing yep. yep and he's just like you know what i think you're fucking rude i think you're fucking terrible I'm like mm -hmm. why because she's identifying what you're doing yeah like she's yeah she she knows what you're talking about so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play this a little bit. And then, um, th there's actually a couple points that, that pop up here uh, during the course of their back and forth that, that get weird. Okay. No, that's what it is. You're leading oh, me you're towards your proposed it. desired outcome and refusing to answer times, questions that are posited to you. Because you, right, um, you oh, have a directive. I, I hate muting you, but please forgive me. Don't make me mute you, please. Uh, just a, okay, so if we backtrack just a step to be, be sure where we are. Um, I love your guys' passion. And so just to be sure that, like, in terms of where we are, maybe what we could also do, too, because I know that there were two kind of arguments or kind of questions, uh, cases that were being made in the sense that one was kind of with Shannon kind of making a case that there might be an incoherence with the mind on Christianity and also with Duncan's case and where he was headed. And so maybe if we take turns, is it OK if we do take turns where if Shannon wants to ask a question now? Uh, That's fine. I've been above board trying in good faith to answer her questions, and she's constantly evading and over talking me when I'm trying to get to a point. And then she wants to psychoanalyze me as, as though I, uh, you know, well, as, as though I need psychotherapy. It's we, a sleazy tactic. We, we, but a smile on her face. Just, um, <laughs> because it's, because it's, it's I, interesting. No, you're I, being sleazy. Listen, okay. No, right, you're being on, a bit of a manipulator. Relax. You gotta relax. No. Hold on a second. And okay, I find it difficult to respect so sorry, that. Sorry, you guys. Well, hold on. Uh, if you can just give me a sec. If we can just, without commentary on how it's been going so far, just, I think we can keep going for just a bit longer before Q&A if we want to do that. By just I'd like an answer to my question. All right, and she's 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 be filibustering and evading it. And I, I would like an answer to my question. So, okay. I, I did. I did. Okay, what we'll do is you evaded the question because you wanted to get and back here on your. Go, here we go again. Trail. I think that the yeah, last one. I think. Hold on a second. I think that the last one was asked by Duncan, if I'm not mistaken, and I might be. So let me know if I am. And then I, I think Shannon had answered that one. I think Duncan, you're asking another. Is it okay if we have Shannon ask one of her questions and we'll come back that's, to that's, the one that you were on? That's fine. Okay. Thanks. My question to her. My question to her. Right. Well, this is the question. The question. The last question I was asking her. When I ask her how is it that, that there is there is no God, I'm still waiting for an answer to that. She said because she doesn't have an answer about how the soul would interface with, with the body, that it doesn't follow from that that there is no ultimate creator God. And I'd like to know from Shannon, how is it that there is no creator God? Her position entails the falsity of all God concepts. So how is it that God is false, Shannon? I explicitly stated that you could potentially get me to a deistic position, but that it wouldn't necessarily matter and that I wouldn't worship that God. So you're no longer an atheist? No, I, I feel as though I'm legitimately, from a philosophical perspective, more of a temporal agnostic, where uh, like I, I don't refute the why can't he just God. I more so don't believe in any proposed God so? that has been. Why can't he just have the conversation based on a person giving giving being charitable in a discussion about a on given given no, concepts? No, because that, that's, it, that's, well, that's if the it issue. comes about the person that he's talking about, not the actual topic. Right, but he can't he can't let them. Um, He can't let them say stuff like this, right? Like he's he's got he's got to go after them and like, hey, you know what? You know, what you know, the stance that you're taking is is irrational or whatever. Like, it, it doesn't actually matter that it is. 
um, but he, he he wants to make it. He wants to make this something that's irrational. Or um, and so when she when she's trying to say like you know hey you know I don't that's that's not my point or that's not my um, that's not my stance. He'll he'll flip out and say like oh yeah I think it is. Oh I think it is. I think you're I think you're denying Christ or I think you're denying whatever. Um, that's not what she's doing. Like it's pretty clear to anybody who's watching this from the outside that that's not what she's doing, right? But he he will tell his opponent that that's what's happening, right? And then and then he'll try to go on and say like, oh well, you know, here here's why this is happening. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 just it's it's nonsense. But what I like best about what he tries to do is actually coming up um, because um, it gets better. Presented to me. I've already explained to you why that's incorrect. That's the second time you've repeated the same response. What we're going to do. But then you repeated the same question and you've already explained to me why it's incorrect. Why did you repeat the question? Because you're being evasive. That's why. Yes. I don't have too much background noise coming through, do I? Uh, No, almost none. Do I? Okay, cool. No, just your breathing. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to move through the kitchen. All right. <sighs> yeah, I'll turn my mic off here. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Questions in now regarding the, the spirit or the soul on the Christian worldview possibly being incoherent. So if we can, we can jump back to that one, and then I promise we'll come right back to your question, Dart. I'm hoping this will diffuse it a little bit, so we can keep, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not, so not she, necessarily very uncomfortable that answer. Hold on, I know, but I'm not uncomfortable at all. I answered it honestly. The reason I love using Streamyard, well, that's easy. I can make me Chris Brogan. I can make a show like the Backpack Show. Yeah, yeah, Shannon, yeah. now now is a good chance. But I'm not fulfilling the I'm not, I'm not fulfilling the necessary responses in order to lead in a specific direction and i think that that might necessarily might be what is, is ultimately frustrating to you which is why you threw it back on me potentially by saying that i am dishonest one of the reasons that i'm no, smiling is because and you're interrupting oh okay so evasive you said some other things about me earlier i can't remember them verbatim so i won't assert them but you cast dispersions on my intentions and one of the reasons i think that you may have done that and this is from my perspective so that you can know how i'm feeling in this conversation as i'm interacting with you which is an important part of dialectical approaches is that you're attempting to lead me down a specific path and the reason is because you have a sort of set of scripted responses and if one of those responses that i give doesn't hit instead of exploring what that means to me what you intend to do is ask another series of questions that leads to until you ultimately get a, a, a response set that allows you to progress along to your ultimate outcome and uh, that is a little bit frustrating and potentially a manipulation tactic that is is something that it, while you're calling me evasive i've actually answered your questions honestly in, in so much as i understand them as coherent to me okay, and when so, i asked for clarification so, you've called me evasive but that yeah, was actually okay. just me asking for clarification so that i can okay, ensure that i'm answering so, them honestly so now so, we're, so now we're clear how you feel so are do you now affirm there is a god no i don't affirm that there is a god okay then then your position entails the falsity of god oh my goodness it goes right are you afraid there. to defend your atheism i mean no. i see regularly on youtube you know uh, proclaiming you're an atheist so I am. are you still are you still an atheist Yes, I would say colloquially, yes, but philosophically, I'm more of a temporal agnostic. Okay, well, I, I explained to you uh, that that's incorrect, okay, because you do not affirm and assert that God is the necessary prerequisite for facts. That non-assertion is an indirect denial. Are you aware of that? Fascinating. Wouldn't that non-assertion be... It, wait a minute. Can you stop there for a second? But, so he's saying that by not... Why would he use non-assertion? He, he would basically be saying that ultimately they're asserting that not a non-assertion anymore he's saying that by their position by by basically uh not using god as the prerequisite for all facts they are asserting that god is not this is a problem that he runs into quite a bit because he doesn't actually have to like bring that up but he does <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry sorry folks <clears throat> um he um his take on this whole thing is that uh she is uh, what's he trying to accuse her of like she's um obfuscating right accuser 
<laughs> yeah, I mean. Sorry, I had to do it. Ba- yeah, basically. But, um, yeah, if I had to, if I had to point out exactly what was going on here, I don't think that she would actually be on to anything. I would, I would um, say that she was. Um, He's he's full of crap. That would be my take. So let's see here. Let's play this. Go on. My response are you, when you. <laughs> Wow, your dialectic approach is ultimate is really, really fascinating. Like your choices, like when you say, "Are you aware of that?" You're affirming what I just said is accurate. Are you aware that I was actually no? Because it wasn't really a question. It was it was a veiled assertion, which is really really fascinating. Okay, so can you can you ask me the same question without "Are you aware of that?" At the end, as an actual question. Shannon, you can stop with the. You think I have a shtick? That's amazing. Okay, you guys are saying natural. She's she's not off base. Uh, right, like she's she's like okay. Well, Darth is trying to say that she has a shtick. He's accusing her of one, and um, she's pointing it out. Like, and he's using he's using one. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the idea that he you know that he he he's somehow in a in a in a status that, that that's different than whatever she's talking about. Um, she's got him. She, she, she's got him like I mean literally she's got him wrapped right around her finger um, he's he's lost it one second you guys have one second all right all right you want to do the psychoanalysis one second one second oh that's so cool all you want like a school girl but you're being I am just like a school girl just like a silly silly school girl I don't know why you're bothering with me well listen God is a world view okay we're at the creator creation distinction if you do not affirm it then you deny it there's no escaping this okay either you affirm that the ultimacy of reality is a personal creator or you are deriving intelligibility without that you keep smuggling it personal you keep smuggling yeah. in personal. That's an interesting word choice too. Do you, does anybody yeah. ever di- dissect your word choices? Like they're very calculated. It's actually really, really interesting because you keep smuggling in personal and you also say things at the end of your, like when you're talking to people, you say, do you understand that? Or you don't understand that. And those are very prefer, explicit in choices and dialectic approaches. Do you, so that you, do you can accept make sure- that your position entails the falsity of God? Do does I? Your, does your position no. entail the falsity of God? Does my position? No, because I'm open to yes, counter- that's so fun. You're you're telling me what my position is now, but you're also I, telling I me you're not a manipulator. One second. And that you don't I'm, have a script I'm, or a shit. I'm trying to have a con- I'm trying to do this. conversation with no, you. No, you're already right, script. This is amazing. Forgive me. I got to interrupt yeah. you guys. Just forgive me. Just, I think that we had there, uh, Duncan had asked the question, do you think that entails like positive atheism as some called her the negation of God's existence? Oh, I already said I'm essentially philosophically temporal agnostic. I've said that a couple of times. I'm open to, I'm open to. One second. And then, so I think that, hold on a second. Is that I think then Duncan asked, or I think Duncan said like, no, it does entail the negation of theism. But he didn't explain it. He's just telling you wrong. All right. What we'll do is we'll give Duncan a chance to try to explain that. And then we don't have too much time before we go to the Q&A because I want to say thanks again to both of our speakers for being willing to go late with us tonight. It is very late. And it would have been more productive if we didn't have the psychoanalysis shtick in performance. We've got No, it's not even psychoanalysis. It's dialectic approach analysis. It's really a fascinating concept. Yeah. Yeah. No, it really is fascinating. fascinating. Let's see. What Um, what we can do is go ahead. Being rude with a smile on your face doesn't cut it, Shannon. Well, we'll I can't see what your face looks like. So there's that. But I'm not I'm not being rude. You are. (laughs) No, you are. You're being manipulative, which is by default is de facto. Right. More right. psychobabble. More psychobabble. Okay. What we'll do is if Darth asking you questions about Duncan, your position. Duncan, no, Duncan, you can say whatever you like about me. You're attempting to manipulate me in a conversation. The, the so your assertions right, regarding my intentions actually sorry, are sorry, no guys. consequence to I me. I need to do this. Forgive me. I muted both of you. Sorry about that. Um, just for a second. If it, so, now would be a good chance, Duncan. If you want to ask the question regarding, if you want to explain how Shannon's position actually leads to a negation of theism, this is a perfect chance. Because otherwise, we'll. I understand your concern about the way the uh, discussion is going or has gone. Uh, fair, fair enough. Well, that's what I've been attempting to do. Okay. We'll give you a shot right she now. She just wants, she wants to do her psychoanalysis. So, okay, well, hold on. All right. Ready okay, God, God, God is a worldview. It entails the creator-creation distinction, sometimes referred as the creator-creature distinction. You will be either operating from that foundation or you will deny it as a worldview. Okay, whatever worldview and its ultimacy and its dependent states that you do not accept, then you deny it in virtue of the law of excluded middle. If you do not affirm that God is the necessary precondition of all facts, which is a worldview, then you are operating from another worldview where the necessary precondition of facts is not God. 
There's no third alternative. You cannot be indifferent or claim ignorance. That's why I asked you the question, do you assert that God is the necessary precondition of all facts? And you said no. So that means that your position entails that facts can be viable and intelligible without necessitating referencing God as the precondition. That position entails the falsity of God, whether you realize it or not, whether you want to admit it or not. Your position entails the falsity of God. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you accept what I said? I don't accept what you said. I heard what you said. Good. Give me a rebuttal. All right, what we're uh, going to do is we'll give Shannon a rebuttal, and then we will probably go into the Q&A. And we survived it unscathed. Uh, so, this is fun. Shannon. This is fun. I like this. Um, <clears throat> I feel as though even if I accepted everything that you said, it still wouldn't have a foundation because the only foundation I have to go on is that it was revealed to you in a manner in which that it has to be true. And that's essentially just you saying it was revealed to you in a manner in which it was true, which is subject to your own individual perceptions and perceptions are fallible, including your own, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. So why should I trust your perceptions? I didn't hear a rebuttal. You want to try again? Oh my goodness. But you, <laughs> I'm rude. <laughs> what would, what would, this is so that, much fun. Let's what do this every day. You guys said, said, this is fascinating. We are going to go into the Q&A. And you did not give me a rebuttal. We're going to go into the Q&A. Thanks for everybody's questions and also thanks for the speakers we i just appreciate them for being here hey, Joe. Sitting in the hot seat and so we appreciate them and especially them so, staying up so late for this debate so you're real you're real you're real quiet i the, i was uh, I, I think it's point, funny she, she she actually starts treating uh darth dawkins like he's a bug under glass yeah i think it's funny if he can't so if he can't I think one of the things that I, I would like to have heard her say is, if I can't, re if I if I didn't rebut your argument or refute your argument, what does that yeah. mean? What does that What does that do in the in the course of the conversation from here on out? But right. yeah, it, it obviously didn't. They're moving on to questions and answers, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, but based on you know, based on what you know, we've heard from like, there's there's not much here. All right. Next Reese, up, have so you we'll ever fly through as many of these questions as we can? We appreciate. What's up? Oh, Reese said. Uh, he said nobody wants to see Darth's face, and I was just kind of curious by that claim if he's ever seen Darth's face, but it's not important. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think somebody has seen Darth's face, but all of your questions, Brian Stevens. Thanks for yours. He said. What reason does Darth give for an unconditional, non-dependent entity being a me metaphysical necessity? Yep. What reason do I give? Well, the only reason that could be given is that that ultimacy, that metaphysical absolute, would have to be personal, rational, and reveal itself, and including having other properties and attributes such as the Christian God, being omniscient, omnipotent, and always truth revealing. Without that basic property set along with others, there would be no way of knowing, uh, If it's attaining, personal, or is it ever objective? Anything would be ultimate. And one would simply be left in a position what? that contingency is ultimate, and therefore you would be able to... He said it has to be necessary that it's personal, but if it's personal, is it really objective? If it's just if it's based on you personally, then that wouldn't be objective. Sure. Objective, objective meaning that you know it's outside personal feelings or, or personal opinion. But if this is necessarily personal, then it can't be objective. Right. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Could be wrong. I just wonder. Could be. To have intelligibility for any facts whatsoever if contingency is ultimate rather than identifying and accounting for that which is ultimate that provides for contingency thank you very much next up Fred Cruz Ruiz Au Flamio thanks for your super chat he said DD when will you do a Bible study with Kent Hovind a Bible study um I'm not I'm not friends with Kent Hovind gotcha. I know of him but I'm not friends with him gotcha thanks so much Stephen Steen thanks for your sick super chat he says James is looking hot from B. Arthur. That's uh, thanks for that. That guy. That nasty guy. Look out for him, folks. Uh, nasty. I'm sorry, Wilson. Thanks for your super chat. He said, "How much for James to moderate shirtless?" Oh, come on. What is with you Don't, guys? No. Um, yeah, I would never. <laughs> all of you sickos. All right. Thanks for your uh, super chat. I, let's see. I'm sorry, Wilson. Uh, thanks for that. And the Duke Bonanza. Thanks for your super chat. They said, "I love Duke." Hi, Duke. They said, "Is the soul created at conception, or does it pre-exist the body? If it's the former, what's the link to physical procreation?" I think that's um, that. That question's not answered in scripture. Well, have, well, you'll have to repent and become a Christian, um, turn to Jesus Christ, and when you get to heaven, God will be able to answer that question. Gotcha. Oh, Thanks yeah. very much. Next up, appreciate your super chat, Lukewarm Lettuce. They said, DA's description of the soul has me picturing scenes from Alien at the moment. Yeah, it's weird, right? Gotcha. Sitchafredo Sarabia, thanks for your super chat as well. They said, at two psychologist students here, is there not belief in consciousness or mind that can't be measured by science but, but is real? 
if you can't measure it yet, I believe in I believe in it in psychology, he's soul exempt. Shannon, I don't understand. You. I don't. I don't. I don't understand what that says. Like the, the mind body problem, like the hard problem of consciousness, oh. is like, is that what they're talking about? They said if you can't measure it yet, one believes in it. Why is a soul exempt? Okay, so I, I screwed it up the first time. Sorry about that. So James, said, get it together. I said, is there not belief in consciousness or mind that can't be measured by science but is quote real? If you can't measure it yet, one believes in it. If you can't measure it yet, one believes in it. Why is the soul exempt? Why is the soul exempt? I'm still not certain I understand the question. So why is there not belief in it? Oh, oh, are they saying if oh, consciousness okay. is something that exists, like it, he, they are talking about like the hard problem, like consciousness exists. And like, we could talk about this for hours. I love the hard problem. It's like, why does a, a, like a confluence of atoms like in, instantiate consciousness, but yet an individual atom isn't conscious and like a, a, an aggregate of chemicals is, has an emergent property of consciousness, but just the chemicals individually. Like if you take one, if you take one serotonin, like molecule out of the brain that it's not going to have consciousness. But if you have all of them there, they have an interaction that elicits consciousness, like the, the hard problem. So if consciousness gets an exemption for existing, why does the soul not get an exemption as existing? And I think the answer to that might be to me that the two are essentially conflated together. So you, most people, if you believe in a soul, see the soul as consciousness. So it wouldn't get an exemption because they're seen as one and the same. And if you don't see a soul as existing, you just see it as consciousness. So it's not that it gets an exemption. It's that, you you would have to divorce the soul from consciousness and which, which which is my problem like if the soul is divorced from consciousness then what is it how does it interact with us is it us and if it's not us if we change but it doesn't then it isn't us and what does it matter what we do and where is that line those are the, the so i think that might be the question maybe and if i didn't do it justice i'm sorry i think you definitely got it so i think the basically maybe i should write in on the youtube chat maybe i would get my questions answered then Oh, very sassy. Okay, so, okay. If they were about the soul that I brought up, then sure. What if they were about the script you wanted me on? All right, one second. Yeah. 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 We all go. Christianity. We'll go. That we'll brought hell. Hold on a second. I only got notifications three hours ago. I was even going to be here. We've got a question for Darth or for Duncan. Sidifedos Rabia, thanks for your super chat. They said, Duncan. Gotta get a job. Man. Uh, the Bible states God created man and gave breath to. Yeah, what, you got to you got to get ad block for. You can get ad block for your Chrome browser. There, there is a there's an extension that you can or, that you can download onto Chrome that will block those. Sure. Sure. All right. So. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to address here? Uh, no, not really. Um, that's, that's, that's about it. Okay, <laughs> so, cool. Uh, the, you know, what she was actually trying to, like, pull, pull, pull up, but, you know, that's... I, I always thought that having a conversation with Darth would be easy until the first time I had a conversation with him. And it's... It's... Inc you have to just... You have to just kind of take it in stride. You can't get upset. You can't overtalk. You just basically let him go. Like one time, I think he actually, he let one person talk for like, say, a whole, maybe talk for a whole. Oh, shit. Just, Jeff just bowed out. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the, welcome to the J Spatch Cut stream. Uh, but yeah, if you ever have a conversation, for those who have never had a conversation with Darth Dawkins before, um, you, you, you have to take it in stride. And the problem is, is I, I, I heard somebody say that one time, he was having a conversation with somebody and the one person got to say something for maybe a total of two minutes. And then he went on a rant for like 28 minutes and the person just left. And then he basically, I think he badmouthed the person for leaving. He, he, it wasn't a discussion. He's just, just basically lecturing them. And so just bear that in mind. And it, and that's what I would recommend to anyone. If you're having a conversation with Darth and, and you think it might, it might work out. But if he does go into a long diatribe and you're sitting there timing him, just, you know, look at your, you know, look at the clock on your phone or, or on your on your computer or whatever you're using at the time. And if it goes longer than like five or eight minutes or whatever, just leave. Don't say goodbye. Nothing. Just walk away because he, he doesn't want to have a conversation with you. He just wants to talk at you. Would you say that's fair, Jeff? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Oh, all right. <laughs> I thought I would. I thought I had removed myself. You did remove yourself. Um, apparently, the the iPhone uh, and Streamyards is is having an issue with with stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you are you doing this from your phone? Uh, no. Oh, so what would the iPhone have to do with you dropping out? Uh, when, when I initiated it, it was through the phone, but then I like switched it over to my uh, my laptop. Oh, so, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, and for whatever reason, it's, it's kind of losing its mind. Yep. So, are you uh, anything else you got, or did you want to? Did you want to possibly uh, go over some of Pine Creeks, or would you rather do that like off air? No, we, yeah, we can we can probably do that off air. That way, you can kind of keep with this, you know, since that's what this is titled as debate recap of of their conversation. Yeah, um, the, the 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 whole point of doing this was to kind of bring um, uh, Otangelo into the fold, and you know, have him talk about you know some of the. Uh, some of the the, the 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 basic debate things that uh, Darth tries to bring into a variety of his his uh, uh, arguments, and I don't think that they're actually really good. So. Yeah. Okay. So you gonna you gonna take this off air? You all yeah. good? Okay. Anyway, for anybody that's actually watching uh, or anybody that's uh, listening, I appreciate your uh, viewership. I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, if, if you've got anything that you want to like shill or uh, you know connect link-wise, put that in the live chat. Um, I apologize if you're not, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're not... Uh, 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 recognized viewer <laughs> so Benghazi says more scotch for Jeff and he spelled it M-O-A-R <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a legitimate typo or what but anyway we'll wrap this up